everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania on a pretty chilly day. And even though it is cold, it's not going to stop me from spending time outside. And so I've got a brand new video for you, and in this one we will be discussing a mushroom whose use by humans goes back at least 5,300 years. And that mushroom is none other than the birch polypore. So where do I get that number 5,300 from? Well, that's a pretty bold statement, right? So in 1991, hikers in the Italian Alps discovered a 5,300 year old naturally preserved mummy whom archaeologists soon dubbed Otzi the Iceman. And if you haven't heard of him, check him out. There's a lot of information online. It's some pretty interesting stuff. Now on him, among many other things, he was carrying two specimens of the birch polypore that were threaded into hide straps. And so traditionally, we see this mushroom being used as a food, as a medicine, as a styptic, as a razor strop, as a polisher, even as a transporter of fire. In this video, we will be discussing, of course, the identification, because I want you to be able to confidently identify this species. We're also really gonna dive into the medicinal research, because not only do we see centuries of use by traditional cultures utilizing this mushroom, but we also see modern research, dozens of studies, continually unraveling the impressive mycomedicinal profile of this species. So stay tuned, I know you're gonna learn a whole lot without any further introduction on my part. Here is the birch polypore. The birch polypore's Latin name is Piptoporus betulinus, or so it used to be Piptoporus betulinus. Its new current accepted name is Fomitopsis betulina. You see, mushrooms are constantly undergoing taxonomic revision, more so than species in the animal kingdom, more so than probably the plant kingdom as well. I don't know why, I don't know what the mushrooms did to deserve all these name changes, that's just the way it goes. So if you look in older field guides, even current field guides, if you look on even current websites, you're probably still going to see Piptoporus betulinus as the name However, the current accepted name is Fomitopsis betulina. And Fomitopsis is a genus of mushrooms. You might be familiar with another species in that genus, which would be the red-belted polypore. So when we look at the species name betulina or betulinus, that refers to the substrate on which this mushroom grows, which would be the birch tree. And that brings up the role that this mushroom is playing in the woods. So this is a brown rot fungus. It's brown rot fungus on birch trees, the Betula genus. So we've talked about white rot fungi, like the turkey tail fungus, the oyster mushroom. These are very good at breaking down primarily the lignin, also the cellulose and the hemicellulose in wood. Brown rot fungi, on the other hand, don't really degrade the lignin, they degrade the cellulose and the hemicellulose, and they leave behind brown rotted wood, that's why they call it a brown rot fungus, consisting mostly of modified lignin. So brown rot fungus found on birch trees. This is an annual mushroom, so that means it grows in one season, unlike you know, some of the perennial polypores like artist conch. You'll see that growing over several seasons. This one typically grows in June and July. That's when it starts forming, and then it'll grow all the way through the end of the year, even into December and January. And then it'll overwinter, so you'll see it hanging around even into February and March, but it'll be too old by then. You probably won't want to harvest it at that point. As I mentioned before, this does grow on birch trees, and primarily here in Pennsylvania, you will see it on yellow birch trees. You may occasionally find it on black birch trees as well, but the one that's growing right here is on a yellow birch tree. Typically, you're gonna find them on dead birch trees, whether they're standing or fallen. Sometimes you might find them on living birch trees, but that birch tree will be on its way out. And so it's primarily a saprophyte, helping to break down the wood in dead birch trees, but some research suggests that it might be parasitic of living birch trees as well. Regardless, it's going to be found on a birch tree. That's where it gets its species name, Betulina or Betulinus. This mushroom is very easy to identify. Just look at it and develop a search image for this. Nothing really looks like this, either on the top or on the bottom, especially if it's growing on a birch tree. It almost looks like a pancake coming up out of the birch tree. That's what I typically see when I look far away and I see these coming out of birch trees. I typically see pancakes coming out of birch trees. The cap is whitish to tannish to brownish, and it tends to darken with age. And if you peel away some of the cap skin, you will see that it's white underneath. It can be up to 10 inches in width, but you'll see it, you know, two inches, three inches, four inches. The most I've seen is about 10 inches long. And the cap of this mushroom, where the margin is, that margin folds over to the pore surface on the underside. So if you look on the underside, you will see that the margin, the end of this cap actually folds under it and leaves a little margin hanging out where the pore surface is. And when you look at the pore surface, you will see that it's recessed. I mean, it's kind of sunken in. So if you look in a field guide and it says a recessed pore surface, that just means that it's kind of sunken in because that margin comes over the end of the cap. This mushroom is a polypore, which means that the underside has thousands of tiny, tiny pores. At first, the pore surface is whitish, but as this mushroom ages, it tends to turn tannish brown. 
This mushroom doesn't really have a stalk attaching itself to the wood. It might have a tiny nub, but typically you're gonna find it just attached directly to the wood. You don't necessarily need to take a spore print from this mushroom because it's pretty easy to identify in the field. However, if you do take a spore print and it does drop its spores, whenever you do take a spore print, you will see that the spore print is white. Now, there aren't really any lookalikes to this mushroom because when you go through all those features that I described, you should have no trouble discerning between this and any lookalikes. However, the one lookalike might be Cryptoporus vulvatus. However, that species is typically much smaller. You don't really see it on birch trees and it has a hidden pore surface. That's why they call it cryptoporous. The pore surface is hidden inside. It's a really cool fungus. And then when the mushroom matures, it opens up and it releases its spores. But besides that, you really won't confuse this for anything if you go through all those characteristics that I described previously. And so whenever we look at the research, I'm gonna talk about three studies in particular, three recent ones. The most recent is from this year, 2016. And this study was put out in the journal Records of Natural Products. And the study looked at extracted triterpenes and the bioactivity of these triterpenes. So triterpenes, if you look into medicinal mushrooms, you're always gonna come across triterpenes because they have pretty potent medicinal activity. Triterpenes are essentially naturally occurring compounds found either in the plant or the mushroom kingdom that have a wide spectrum of biological activity. And so in this particular study, they looked at isolated triterpenes and their antimicrobial properties. And they found that these triterpenes had antibacterial properties against gram-positive bacteria. Another related study, all the way back in 2000, put out in the Journal of Antibiotics, looked at a novel isolated compound known as piptamine. And they found that this one had potent antibacterial properties, especially against two species in pretty low concentrations. And those two species would be Staphylococcus aureus and Enterococcus fecalis. Both of these bacterial species are commensal organisms, so they can reside in somewhat healthy levels in the human body, but they can breach that safety zone. And they can actually lead to some pretty serious life-threatening conditions. What's more, both of these species, Staphylococcus aureus and Enterococcus fecalis, are drug resistant or they can be drug resistant. So perhaps in the future, we'll see piptamine being used as an antibacterial compound against both of these drug resistant bacteria. Another study from 2011 put out in the International Journal of Medicinal Mushrooms looked at the anti-cancerous properties of this mushroom against colorectal adenocarcinoma. And what they found was that extracts of the birch polypore decreased the cell viability of the cancerous cells, inhibited the proliferation, inhibited tumor cell adhesion as well. So colorectal adenocarcinoma is found in the lining of the colon or the rectum, and both of these comprise the large intestine. And adenocarcinomas are pretty common. They comprise about 95% of all colorectal cancer cases. So if you are experiencing this condition or you know somebody, maybe your friend or your neighbor or family member who's experiencing this condition, perhaps turn them on to this research and see what the birch polypore may or may not be able to do for you or them. There are three other compounds that I want to talk about really briefly. Betulin, betulinic acid, and lupiol. If you've ever looked into the chaga fungus, perhaps you're familiar with these three compounds. All three of these are either triterpenes or triterpenoids. The chaga fungus, Inonotus obliquius, is a very, very popular medicinal mushroom right now, even though it is technically a sclerotial body. It's a medicinal mushroom that a lot of people harvest, a lot of people utilize, primarily for those three compounds and for other compounds as well. When we look at betulin, betulinic acid, we see that these are anti-cancerous and anti-tumor compounds found in the birch polypore, found in higher concentrations in chaga, however. But when we look at lupiol, which is a triterpenoid compound, that one's found in chaga, it's found in higher concentrations, significantly higher concentrations in certain extracts in the birch polypore. And so lupiol is an anti-inflammatory, anti-cancerous compound found in smaller concentrations in chaga, found in higher concentrations in the birch polypore. And then we find another compound not detected in the chaga fungus, but it's found in the birch polypore, which is taraxasterol. Taraxasterol is an anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial compound, not just found in the birch polypore, it's found in other species as well. It just hasn't been found in chaga yet. And this is not a video on chaga, but if you're interested in acquiring its medicine, but you can't find the chaga fungus, or you're interested in protecting its existence in the wild because you know it's very popular these days to harvest it. Some people might be harvesting it prematurely, not making effective medicines out of it. We can look to useful alternatives and the birch polypore is definitely a useful alternative. It's very easy to find, it's easy to identify and it can be quite common as well. This isn't the only tree around this area where it's growing. And so if you live in an area where it grows, you know the temperate regions of the world where the birch forests are, I'll bet you'll find this species right here. 
appreciate it, acknowledge it, put a name behind it, whether it's Piptoporus betulinus or Fomitopsis betulina, you can call it the birch polypore, you can make up a name. I really, I really don't mind. You can do whatever you want. As long as you do appreciate it, bring it home. Don't just stare at it. Maybe see what it might be able to do for you and your personal medicinal strategy. You know, sometimes the medicine that we need is literally just a birch tree away. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter so that we can stay in touch. This is Adam Harrington. This is the Birch Tree Birch Polyvore signing off from the wonderful woods here in Western Pennsylvania. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.